Good morning folks from Glasgow, it's a beautiful day so far. I've got a day spare and I thought why not let's go for a trip down the water to the biggest island in the Firth of Clyde and that's the Isle of Arran. Long before international travel was really a thing, the people of Glasgow would take their well-earned summer holidays down the coast in places like Rothsea, Dunoon, Millport and where we're going today, Broda Conaran. And like back then, our journey today will start at Central Station. That's me picked up my tickets, but thankfully I've still got time to go and grab a coffee before the train departs. This is a rail and sail fare, so not only does it include the train from Glasgow to Ardrossan, but also the Calmac ferry journey from Ardrossan over to Brodick. And all of that for 17 quid. That's no bad, eh? But just as we leave Central Station, let's just marvel at how beautiful this place is. Whenever I'm in Glasgow, I'm getting my coffee from a Tim Hortons. They've got the weirdest locations here in Scotland and we don't have one in Edinburgh, so I'm not missing this opportunity. Ah, that's better. Now when we talk about doing the water, let's go and have a look at that water, because it's only five minutes from the train station. Something I've never seen before is this old sign for the water bus. Does anyone remember it? Any details about it? I take it it doesn't exist anymore, but it'd be really interesting to hear. Oh no, it's the last green man in Scotland. So there we are, the famous River Clyde. Now I really need to come back here with Alicia and we'll hire some bikes and go right down the river because this isn't the best viewpoint. Now Alicia really loves Glasgow and it's kind of given me a new appreciation for my home city, which is never a bad thing. If you are ever visiting Scotland and you think which city will I go to and you choose Edinburgh, which is not a bad choice, it's a great city, but please don't dismiss Glasgow. You'll see so much contrast between the two cities as well. And you'll find just like the friendliest city, so much going on and so much history as well. And although it's never considered as beautiful as Edinburgh, there is some really stunning architecture here that you've just got to see, you don't want to miss it. Right, let's get going on the first leg of this day trip. I haven't eaten yet, I'm saving myself for the ferry. This is Glasgow Central Police Station. That's another thing about Glasgow, you're always guaranteed to meet a character. Right, platform 13, lucky for some. It actually looks like quite a busy train today. Obviously there's going to be people getting off at intermediate stops, but there's a lot of people with hiking boots that are obviously going to Arran, and there's a lot of day trippers obviously like myself. So let's get on board and find a decent seat. As always, I'm just trying to find a seat that's got a window that's not too dirty. Never easy on ScotRail. So here you can see some other trains that go from Glasgow and I've got ferry connections at Gourick, Weems Bay, Largs and where we're going today are Drossen Harbour. I always do this, I get a good seat and then spend the rest of the journey just wandering about. The train journey is only about 45 minutes today to get to Ardrossan. Morning Paul, thank you very much. Cheers. Please ensure 
Here we are in beautiful Ardrossan and just across beside Clyde Marina you've got the train station and there's a wee covered walkway that will take you all the way to the ferry. And I can see people boarding now so we better not miss the boat. As always, the first place I heard is outside. What an absolutely gorgeous day it is for a wee boat trip. I couldn't be more excited. Now this journey takes about 55 minutes, I believe. So I'll spend a bit of time outside as we leave our Drossen Harbour, and then I'll head down and try and grab something to eat. I'm hoping they've got some cow mac and cheese. If you're familiar with my ferry videos, you'll know that one of the things I really value is good deck access, and this is a winner. As soon as we left the safety of the harbour, the wind fair picked up, to the extent of it being difficult to even hold the camera still. So this is a perfect time for me to pipe down and let you enjoy this beautiful sailing. now arrived in Brodick, but before we can dock we have to do this big sweeping 360 just so all the cars can drive straight off. Off in the background there you can see Aaron's highest peak, that's called Goat Fell, and just under Goat Fell you might be able to make out Brodick Castle. Let's get ashore. So 
So just a couple of hours after we've left Glasgow, here we are in Brodick and it feels like a different world. Lovely big ferry terminal they've got here. So as soon as you arrive in Brodick at the ferry terminal, you've got the buses here and they'll take you all the way around the island. I just don't have time to do one today because it's a Sunday service and that means by the time I got there, I don't think I'd make it back in time for the ferry. But all the buses are timed to connect obviously with the ferries, so it's a really good service. While everyone else who's arrived here is off to explore beautiful Arran, sad old Steve, he's hanging about to watch the boat depart. Here's a wee map of the island and where we've just sailed into here in Brodick. And what you can see actually is that the Highland Fault Line cuts right through the island. So over to this side you've got all the really high summits and Goat Fell, the highest summit, which is probably that one there. And then at the south of the island, it's a lot flatter. It's a cold and windy November day here in Brodick and it's absolutely deserted but you can really see how the place is set up for all the tourism that comes here in summer. But I'd maybe like to come back here out of season again. Maybe come with Alicia, bring the van, spend a few days here and go climbing in the hills. I think that'd be fantastic. Especially if we could get weather like this. This is a cracking little boardwalk that runs along the shore. But when you think of things like this and the big ferry terminal, I think Aaron hasn't been short of investment over the last few years. across this wee bridge I'm just keeping the noise down because there's some very important looking golf games going on over there. But I swear I had no idea how beautiful this island was. Okay so I've been on the island for less than an hour and I'm already questioning myself. I'm like why have I never been here before? And I think it's because in the past I've judged that and I've thought, oh, that's just a touristy place, I won't like it. And you get here and it's just absolutely gorgeous. And of course, that's why it's popular, because it's so beautiful. I'm an idiot. This is a really nice beach and I hope at the end of it I can get a good view of Brodick Castle. Brodick Castle, which lies just outside Brodick. But what a setting it's got. I know it's not open, but still. Sometimes these castles are nicer to see from the outside than the inside anyway. I saw some little signs on that path we've just come off and it was saying that this is the coastal trail and it runs right round the island. There's an idea for the future. Wow, look at that little place right in the side of the road. It's magical. Well, folks, as the sun sets on today's little adventure, it's time to head back to the ferry terminal and jump on the ferry back and then the train back to Glasgow and then drive back to Edinburgh. But I tell you what, it's been a cracking little day. And hopefully it's giving you just that wee glimpse of the island. And if you've never been to Arran before, Hopefully you can see now how easy and how efficient the, the journey is to get here. But I didn't find my perfect view of Brodick Castle. Ah well, next time. A 
I'm not exaggerating when I say I can't remember the last time I've been on one of these little trips where I haven't ended up with soaking feet. This time it's just my right foot. But come on Steve, carry spare socks. So what do I think of Aaron? Well, of course I'm not qualified to even have an opinion. I've been in Brodick for like two hours and that's it. But from what I can see from here, it looks like an absolutely fantastic island and I just can't wait to come back again. And I think that says it all, to be honest. I was back at the dock just in time to watch the boat coming back in from our Drossen. Now one thing I should point out, if you're coming here for a day trip and you want to spend longer on the island, there are earlier sailings out and later ones back, but in winter, a chunk of that time would have been in complete darkness. Oof, that's long enough out here. Right, as promised, I'll now give you a quick look around the interior of the MV Caledonian Isles. Now, it's not a big boat by any means, and there's really just one deck open to customers on the inside, apart from a very small lounge up the stairs, but you'll never struggle to find a seat. That being said, this is almost always a busy crossing, so while you'll be hard pushed to find peace and quiet, it's plenty good enough for a sub one hour sailing. As well as the comfy seats, there's also a separate bar, cafe and restaurant area, and prices were not too bad for on board a ship. My mac and cheese, for example, was around £6.50, and it was really tasty. Great to see so many dogs on board, by the way, even if they weren't all behaving themselves. Um. <coughs> Here we are back where it all started but this is like hour 14 of travelling today and I've still got an hour's drive to get back to Edinburgh so I'm out guys. Thank you so much for watching, see you soon. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun, side by side our fears are done, all the good times just begun. Hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy But things are finally right With you and I The future is bright oh, You and I, we got it oh, We don't need no
Crazy, but things are finally right. 